Hey, thanks for being here. I'm so happy to spend a little time with you today. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, as the announcer just said, that voice in the sky. And we're going to talk about today something I've seen a lot more of in my practice. Uh, I've been in practice for 32 years now. Um, I'm seeing a lot more people coming in with diabetes or pre-diabetes. I, I always get a laugh out of that, pre-diabetes. And what that is is uh, your body is producing too, uh, a lot of insulin. I shouldn't say too much. It's producing exactly the right amount, as a matter of fact. But when insulin is released, I'm going to explain to you what diabetes is, and then I'm going to tell you an amazing new find as to why so many people are spiking their insulin levels. It's really kind of cool stuff. I was talking to Ahmad, uh, my producer, before the show, and he goes, oh, that's an interesting fact. Uh, so it's kind of interesting as to what, we, what we're doing, and, and we're doing more of it, which is why it's getting worse and worse as time goes on. But let's talk about diabetes real quick. Diabetes, two types, type 1, type 2. Type 1, your pancreas just isn't producing insulin. And that usually you're born with it. Sometimes you get it when you're young. And then you have to take an external source, an external source of insulin, usually for the rest of your life, unless you do some dramatic steps to try to jumpstart your pancreas that isn't working. Now, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Type 2 diabetes is different. Type 2 diabetes is your body is producing plenty of insulin. So you eat a sugar, your pancreas releases insulin. Insulin goes to the cells around the body and says, okay, cell, it's kind of like a key. It unlocks the cell, the cell opens up, and it allows sugar to come in. That's what insulin does. Well, if, if you eat a lot of sugar or if you produce a lot of insulin, which I'm going to talk about was surprising that it's not just sugar that's producing insulin now, you're producing a lot of insulin, the cells become insulin resistant. What that means is they don't want to hear about it. This insulin has been telling them to open up and let sugar in for so long. They're saying, I can't take any more. I can't let any more sugar in uh, because it's going to gunk up the works. And so I'm going to tell insulin, stop it. I'm not going to let you open up, open me up and let the sugar in. And so your cells become resistant to the insulin. Insulin resistance, another name for that is type 2 diabetes. Well, we're seeing a surge in type 2 diabetes. And in fact, it's predicted in the next few years that 50% of the Americans are going to be partially or uh, either going to be uh, uh, diabetic or uh, pre-diabetic because we're eating so much sugar and that's causing a big problem. So I did a little homework and I wanted to find out what else could be triggering diabetes. And I'm going to give you one first and then I'm going to go into the surprise one in just a second. So this in the business is called a tease. I'm keeping you hanging on, but you're going to be surprised at this. I was surprised at it and I don't get surprised too often. One of the things that can actually cause uh, problems with your hormones is scented candles. What? Yeah, scented candles. There's a thing called phthalates, and they're hormone-disrupting chemicals, and they're also called obesogens, which means they make you what? Obese. There you go. And they're, they're, they, they have the ability to actually cause you to gain weight. So years ago... When I first started studying biochemistry and neurophysiology and nutrition, and we heard, you know, that calories in, calories out. 3,500 calories meant you gained a pound. You, you, you don't eat 3,500 calories, you lose a pound. Pretty simple math. Well, that was really before all these chemicals came out, right around the 1980s, actually. Study found that uh, people with higher levels of phthalates in their bodies were twice as likely to have diabetes which really is a hormonal disease because the insulin is, is not working right. The phthalates lurk in synthetic fragrances, including things like scented candles. Now, you don't have to give up your candle addiction. That's okay. What I want you to do is I want you to burn beeswax candles. They naturally produce uh, air-cleaning negative ions. Now, negative ions, this is interesting, and I'm going to go into my surprise one. Negative ions uh, actually can make you feel good. In fact, I was going for a hike the other day near some water, and, and uh, the people I was with, uh, one gal said, she goes, well, you know, I always feel good when I'm around the water. And I said, water produces negative ions, and a lot of the toxins in your body are positively charged. So the negative ions bind to the positive ions and neutralize them so they don't run rampant in your body. This is why you feel very nice or refreshed or romantic when you're near the ocean, when you're near waterfalls. Because flowing water creates negative ions. Beeswax candles can do the same thing. So that's where negative ions come in. Now, here's my surprise for you. And this was a cool study. Diabetes rates in China are about 10% of the total population. We in the United States, about 11%. 
But here in the United States, we have a seven times, they, they well, in China, they have seven times less obesity in China than we have in the United States. So we kept thinking, well, obesity is linked to diabetes. There's your problem. Japan has eight times less diabetes than we do, yet they have a higher incidence of newly diagnosed diabetes cases than we do, nine per thousand compared to our eight per thousand. They're skinnier and they still have diabetes. So now we started having a problem because this phenomenon just started happening recently, let's say the past 20 years. So the rise in these diseases of affluence, we call those, you know, we have diseases of rich people in the United States. Uh, over the last half century has been blamed in part to tripling the consumption of animal sourced foods. The upsurge in diabetes has been most dramatic and it's also ha happened in about the last decade. So this 9.7 diabetes prevalence rate that kind of similar to the United States, they appear to have one of the lowest rates in the world in early 2000. So in the past 17 to 20 years, they caught up to us in diabetes. What was the difference? Oil consumption went up 20%. Pork consumption went up 40%. Rice consumption dropped 30%. Uh-oh, I got a break. I can't, I can't finish my story here. Folks, got to go to a break. Really good information coming up. Don't go anywhere. If you have a healthcare question, I'm going to open up the phone lines. 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. Lots of great information there. We archive radio shows. You can send me questions. But I, don't go anywhere. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about why we think diabetes is skyrocketing uh, in Asia. Folks, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. I tell your friends. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Do appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here. We're talking today about diabetes, and it's become such a big issue that we have to, uh, we have to pay attention to it. We can't just keep ignoring it because diabetes, although it's a disease, is a symptom. Just like back pain, neck pain, headaches, these are symptoms. And what oftentimes we do is we try to treat the symptoms, but we don't get to the cause. And the research is out there on a lot of the problems that most of you are suffering with that we have an answer to get to the cause. You just haven't done it yet, maybe because you don't know what it is. So anyway, this rise uh, in Asia on diabetes, why is this? One of the problems is uh, the, biggest, uh, the biggest study uh, in, in Japan and China associate white rice intake with diabetes. The problem is that their white rice consumption on average is going down. One possibility is that the animal protein is making the rice worse. Now, if you feed somebody like white mashed potatoes, a high glycemic food, and what glycemic means is how much insulin it causes to be released, uh, the insulin in your pancreas... Pancreas pumps out insulin enough to bring the sugar back down out of the blood. But if you add something simple like tuna fish, tuna doesn't have any carbs, doesn't have any sugar, doesn't have any starch. So why would that make a difference? Or maybe it would even lower your glycemic index. But what happens is you get about twice the insulin spike. This works the same way with white flour spaghetti versus white flour spaghetti with meat. The addition of animal protein makes the pancreas work twice as hard. Why? We're not sure. But we do know that if I give you a bowl of rice, your insulin level is going to go up to a certain level. If I add meat to that, it's going to go higher. And so what's happening is in the past 20 years, unfortunately, uh, countries like Asia have become westernized and they're eating the American diet. And when they eat the American diet, they have American diseases. And in fact, just about the same, right around 10% of the population is diabetic. So here we are trying to treat the symptoms again, but nobody's ever addressing the cause. So this is why it's not a good idea to have a hamburger on a bun with French fries. Because the French fries and the bun are going to spike your blood sugar. The hamburger is going to make it worse. Pretty wild, isn't it? Now, for years, we knew you shouldn't be mixing carbohydrates and proteins because carbohydrates break down in your stomach very quickly. In fact, if I eat a piece of melon, melon is a good example, in about 20 minutes, it's going to go from my stomach into my small intestine. If I eat a piece of meat, it's going to take about six to eight hours. So if you're eating combination of carbohydrates and proteins, what happens is the carbohydrates break down pretty quickly. They stay in the stomach because now the protein has to be digested to pass on to the small intestine. So that's something called food combining. So when you start mixing heavy proteins and heavy carbohydrates, not really a good idea. And the other thing I want you to consider too, and we'll go back to diabetes in a second, 
is let your stomach empty before you put more food in it. Because if I eat, let's assume I have breakfast. I'm a typical American, which I'm not, and I have bacon and eggs for breakfast. It takes about eight hours to get that heavy protein bacon and eggs from my stomach into my small intestine. If I eat, again, in three hours or four hours, that protein, that bacon and eggs are partially digested. Then I throw something else on top of it. Well, now the stomach says, wait a minute, the bacon and eggs should be out of here in two or three hours, and now you just throw a hamburger on there, and that's going to take another six to eight hours. I don't know what to do. I can't pass the hamburger partially digested, but if I leave the bacon and eggs in there long enough, this is your stomach talking, if I leave the bacon and eggs there too long, they're going to over-digest, and now we got a problem. So it's not just what you eat, it's when you eat, and what you eat in the same meal that has such a dramatic impact on your health. So if you're serious, if you want to go to black belt nutrition, I always teach people, I'm going to teach you brown belt. When you're ready to go black belt, I'll take you to a whole nother level. When you're ready to go black belt nutrition, that's when we start doing things like more mono meals. I'm going to have basically a thing. I'm not going to mix a bunch of stuff together. The worst thing you can do is a Thanksgiving dinner or a Christmas dinner, or really a typical American dinner, where you have carbohydrates and fats and proteins and sugars and coffees and alcohols, and your stomach doesn't know what to do. Each one digests slightly different. And when you start mixing it all together, it becomes a big issue. So try this. Here's my challenge to you today. My challenge is this. Try eating a simple meal. I'm just going to have beans without rice, let's say. See how you feel. Then have beans and rice. Or if you're a typical American, I'm just going to have steak today. Then I want you to have steak and potatoes and a piece of bread. See how you feel. If you feel no change, hey, I was wrong. What are you going to do? But if you do feel a change, which you will, you'll say, Dr. Joe was right. And all these years, I've been feeling awful. How many of you feel awful when you come back from lunch? So many people. I ask teachers, one of the best grades, morning or afternoon? 100% of the time, teachers say, say it with me, morning. Why is that? What's the difference between morning and afternoon? The kids had lunch. And what we feed the kids in school is, is, is a sin. So try to think about this. It's not just what you eat. It's when you eat and what you eat it with. That can be messing with you. And if you're eating carbohydrates and proteins, twice the stress on your pancreas. And that can go to di- lead to diabetes issues. So that's what we're talking about today with surprising things that can increase your insulin levels or mess with your hormones and lead to diabetes. And again, if you don't have diabetes, you might have prediabetes. 50% of people in the next couple of years will. I'm going to open up the phone lines. If you have a healthcare question, not just about diabetes, about anything, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, again, I'm board certified chiropractic. I'm board certified in orthopedics, board certified in pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author. And this show that you hear is heard all around the world. So it's very exciting that, uh, folks, if you're listening around the world, welcome. Glad you could join us in in our listener family here. And if you have a question now, 844-44-DR-JOE. If you hear something that you want to hear again, because I talk pretty fast in case you didn't know, I'm going to archive this and hundreds of hours of other shows, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. And you can access this. I videotape my live lectures. Hey, do me a favor. Uh, Like me on Facebook and uh, either, you know, or send me your email address or both. And when I do live lectures, I send out an announcement. I would love to have you come out to the live lectures because they are so much fun. Because so much of health is physical, not chemical. And I can show you things I can't show you on the radio. Every time one of you come in as a patient. You say, wow, now I understand what you're talking about. You're showing me things I I can't show you on the radio. So watch the videos on my YouTube channel. uh, Listen to the radio shows. Uh, They're on YouTube as well now. And you're going to learn so much because you have to hear something over and over and over again. You have to hear something 11 times before it actually sinks in. And that's all on the website, drjoesposito.com. Let's keep talking about diabetes. 844-44-DR-JOE if you have a healthcare question. Your morning routine. What you're doing in the morning could actually affect your hormones, not just your insulin, but all your hormones. Just like phthalates are in in scented candles, we add a lot of these chemicals to our personal care products that smell nice. We have body sprays. We have scented uh, underarm deodorant. We have scented hairsprays. We have scented shampoos, conditioners, toothpastes. Many times these aromas 
are the artificial fragrances and they contain the chemicals. Got to go to break again? Man, so much stuff to cover. If you have a healthcare question, 84444 Dr. Joe, we got a lot more to cover. Uh, my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Uh, like me on Facebook, so you can send me messages through Facebook while I'm on the air. You can send me messages through my website. Uh, or through, try to do them on my website instead of Facebook, folks. A little easier for me to do that if you can. I know a lot of you send me questions through Facebook, and I don't mind that. But if you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, just a little bit easier for me. Hey, do me a favor. Tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. The show, don't go anywhere. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Do appreciate you taking time out of your day. We're talking today about diabetes and some of the things that you're doing that's triggering the problem. Now, even if you're not officially diagnosed with diabetes, you can be having insulin resistance. And so what happens is you eat sugar and sugar goes into your blood system. The pancreas releases insulin. Insulin goes to the cells and tells the cells to open up. It's kind of like a key. It unlocks the cells. A series of, of chemistry, chemical events occurs. The cells open up and allow the sugar in. Well, if the cells don't allow the insulin to open them up, the cells stay closed. The sugar stays in your body. So the body can't just have sugar floating around. It's a mild acid. You can't have acid in your blood. It'll kill you. So your body has to get rid of that. So the body uh, takes it and sends it back to the liver, and it gets stored as glycogen. Glycogen is your reserve tank of fuel. That's when you get hungry and you start, you know, you run out of the food you just ate, your body starts burning glycogen. After the body burns some glycogen, well, if the glycogen stores are all filled up, we can't put any more sugar into glycogen, the, gly the, it goes, the sugar goes back into the liver, gets converted into triglycerides, and triglycerides get stored as fat. This is why carbohydrates make you fat. So you've got to be careful with that. Too much sugar floating around in the blood is a very dangerous thing. And you can mess up this, this very delicate chemical balance with things like scented candles, perfumes, hairsprays, anything that says parfum, P-A-R-F-U-M, or fragrance. There's about, was it 200 different product in ingredients that could fall under fragrance. So it's a pretty broad term. It signals the phthalates are in there. Ditch your vinyl shower curtain, too. If it smells like vinyl, not a good idea. Vinyl is loaded with phthalates. You can do cotton or hemp alternatives for your shower curtain. And in fact, hemp is naturally antimicro antimicrobial. Make sure if your shower curtain does start getting moldy or your bath, bath mat, I think we talked about that last week, you definitely want to wash it. And you could use non-chlorine bleach because I don't want you putting chlorine in, a, in your body because chlorine is a toxic poison. If it's in the air, it's not good because you're inhaling it. But use non-chlorine bleach and hot water to kill off the mold because mold is a big issue when it comes to people's health as well. So we're talking today about diabetes triggers. Let's go to callers. Dave, how can we make your day better? Yes, how are you today? Very happy. I'm listening to the program, and I was just wondering, you were talking about animal protein being combined with carbohydrates at the same time. Yes. Now, I eat very little meat myself, but I get most of my protein from things like black beans or, uh, or cottage cheese and also a whey protein powder supplement. So would those type of proteins have the same effect eating those with carbohydrates? The whey probably would, and I'm not a big fan of whey. If you're going to do whey, I'm going to recommend you do organic, cold, processed. Right. Because if it's not organic, you're concentrating a lot of the steroids, hormones, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, and tranquilizers that they put into the cows. So right. the, the plant proteins don't do it because the plant proteins have fiber. Things like beans have carbohydrates and proteins together. So the, okay. the, they have fiber, and the fiber slowly pushes the sugar through the colon, giving you a slow release of the sugar. So your insulin, you don't get that insulin rush where, like, meat has no, no fiber at all, neither does dairy products. It gives you that slow release of sugar with the, with the fiber so the, the pancreas doesn't have to work as hard releasing so much insulin. Okay. So the, what, about the, what about the cottage cheese? Cottage cheese, again, if you're going to do animal products, I, I don't. I wouldn't recommend you do, but if you do do animal products, I recommend organic only. So the well, cottage I, I cheese. Do that, I do that in, in a particular combination with some uh, black seed oil that I combine with the cottage cheese. Oh, right. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's the reason. I, I don't like cottage cheese at all otherwise. <laughs> so, but that, but that sulfur protein breaks that uh, black seed oil down into a water-soluble right. base, and that, that's a, a natural alternative treatment I have tried. Sure. I and won't mention who that doctor is that 
came up with that, but you might be familiar. Oh, with I'm it. very familiar with the cottage cheese diet. Yeah. Now, if you're going to do it, it's got to be organic, and I wouldn't eat it with any other sugars. Okay, right. like breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. I wouldn't do that at all. Now, milk itself has lactose, which is a sugar. Um, but if you're going to do dairy products, I recommend you do whole fat. Don't do skim milk or skim cottage cheese, if there is such a thing, um, because you got to get the fat. For, uh, that that's the good part for you. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I well, would... that's the only reason. That's the only reason I do the cottage cheese is with that uh, flaxseed oil. Sure. Okay. Yeah, but I wouldn't mix it with any other. Uh, don't don't have a donut with it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate the call. Well, you guys have such good questions. I do appreciate that. If you have a question, give me a call. 844-44-DR-JOE. 844-44-DR-JOE. That number, by the way, rings through to my office when I'm not on the air. So a lot of people say, well, how can I reach you if you're not on the air? 844-44-DR-JOE. You can call the office. But if you have a question, send it to me through my website. That's a much better way to do it, drjoesposito.com. And again, like me on Facebook or send me your email address, and I will get you on a, a newsletter list. We never give your, your email out. Don't worry. Because I want you to come out to the live events that we do. The live events are a lot of fun. In fact, we just, we're doing one uh, coming up soon, and we had free tickets, and we gave out a ton of free tickets on my on a Facebook page. So if you can uh, like me on Facebook, you'll learn all about that. So we're talking today about diabetes triggers. And how many people have trouble sleeping? Raise your hands. A lot of you, especially in the radio business here. Everybody has trouble. I don't think anybody sleeps in this business. But if you have trouble sleeping, that can affect your insulin levels. Your body loses its natural ability to regulate hormone levels when you're sleep deprived. In fact, even one night of little sleep can cause the body to show signs of insulin resistance. The cells don't want to take the sugar. And so that's a big issue, and that could be a risk factor for diabetes. Chronic sleeplessness estimates about 10% of the population is sleep deprived. I think that number's higher. It's certainly higher among my patients. But that's one of the things we talk about a lot with my patients. And they're like, Doc, I just can't sleep. I just can't sleep. One of the things that's going to affect your sleep, which then can affect your, your blood sugar levels, is your stomach's job is to take proteins and break them into amino acids. The amino acid tryptophan combines with vitamin B6 and creates a chemical called 5-HTP. 5-HTP becomes serotonin in your brain and in your digestive system. Serotonin helps you relax and focus. Serotonin becomes melatonin, which helps you sleep. Every person I've ever had in 32 years of practice has a sleep problem, has an undiagnosed digestive problem. And we take the stomach, we pull it down away from the diaphragm. We're chiropractors, we adjust it, and that seems to get great results. If you have a healthcare question, 84444 Dr. Joe, 84444 DRJOE, my website, drjoesposito.com. Hey, don't go anywhere, we're going to be right back. I am happy that you're here. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and we're talking today about diabetes. And uh, like I said, about half of us are pre-diabetic or diabetic, and it has almost all of it to do with our diet. But there's other things, too. We talked about chemicals, uh, hairsprays, colognes, phthalates. These are chemicals that are found in fragrances. As a chiropractor, I find uh, oftentimes that people with diabetes have a pinched nerve at their sixth thoracic vertebrae. That's your mid-back, because that's the nerve supply to the pancreas. And by adjusting that area, we open up the nerve supply to the pancreas, and that helps the pancreas work more efficiently, just like any organ in the body, the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, the gallbladder, the prostate. If there's a pinched nerve going to an organ, that organ can't work. So we check for pain, of course, because if you have pain in your back or anywhere, you have a pinched nerve. Obviously, you can't feel pain without a nerve uh, sending the message to the brain. But 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. So you can have a pinched nerve and not know it. And this is why in our offices, we always check the nerves that feel pain and we check the nerves that don't feel pain. And we do a nutritional workup on all our patients because I want my patients to get better as quickly as possible. And I tell my patients, and if you come in as a patient, I'll tell you this too, I'm not here to get you out of pain. I'm here to get you well. And if your goal is just get out of pain, tell me, we'll do a different treatment plan than we would for somebody who actually wants to get well. And 100% of patients say they want to get well. So I'm assuming that that's what you want to do too. So you got to look at that. So we look at the diet. And we get that straightened out. There's a couple of supplements that work real well. Uh, one of the supplements is called Gymnema. Gymnema helps with your sugar cravings. If you have bad sugar cravings, I get people on a supplement Gymnema once or twice a day, and it helps their sugar cravings dramatically. If you can't stop yourself, you're going nuts, you have to have sugar, take a Gymnema tablet, we have them at our office, and chew it. Now, it doesn't taste good, but that's not what, what I want you to do it for. Then try eating sugar. The sugar then loses its sweetness. 
I'm assuming this the gymnema does something to your taste buds and, and you can't taste sugar. And so then you start learning a Pavlovian reflex of when I eat sugar, it doesn't taste good. When I eat sugar, it doesn't taste good. And after a few times, your brain says, oh, I don't feel like sugar. It doesn't taste good. So in emergency situations, we can actually use the gymnema not at, only as a supplement, uh, but as a uh, as something to chew on. And of course, everyone, I think, should be taking Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Because so many times, I hear this all day, every day, uh, when patients start taking it, or if people can order it on my website, drjoesposito.com, and I'll get an email or a message at the office saying, Doc, I started taking the Super Greens, the Essential Source, and I my cravings have gone away dramatically. Because when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food, you're hungry for nutrition. And I created Super Greens, an essential source, as, as just giving you the, all the nutrition you need, minimum amount of nutrition, in a quick, easy, really inexpensive way. It's, it's powders. I take a scoop of each, have it sitting here in front of me at the studio. I mix it with coconut milk or almond milk. I put it in a jar and shake it up. You can put it with a frozen banana, whip it up into a smoothie type thing or a frozen fruit, and it works amazing. So as a general overall first step for health, I think everybody should be taking Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. This stuff's amazing, and for what you're getting, it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, you can get them on my website, drjoesposito.com. You can get them on Amazon as well. Uh, Amazon carries my books. If you don't have my books, you can get them there too, my, or, or, at our offices too, save shipping. Uh, but Amazon carries the Super Greens, the Essential Source, the books. So we want to try to get you working as normally as we can. We talked about sleep. And how sleep can affect your hormone levels, all hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, estradiol. So we've got to get your sleep working. And if you're not digesting your food properly, you're not producing serotonin. Serotonin becomes melatonin. 95% of the serotonin in your body is not used in your brain. It's used in your digestive system. So once again, we go back to the digestive system. So as a chiropractor, of course, I look for back pain and neck pain, but I also want to get the digestive system working. And many times we have to adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm to resolve the acid reflux, the heartburn, the burping, the gas, the bloating, along with getting the spine fixed, along with the diet. What do we call that? You regular listeners, you know what we call that. We get the nervous system, digestive system, and working, working together. Jobamacare. There you go. Timothy, how can we make your day better? Um, I'm, I'm a college student. Um... I'm trying to uh, lose and lose my my gut. Uh, trying to get healthier. Um, what do you suggest as far as diet or exercise regimen? Oh man, we got a lot of that. Okay, if you go to my website, I have a uh, on my YouTube channel. I have a video. It's called "The Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition." It's no charge. It's all free. Watch it because it's going to tell you what not to eat: alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Those are the seven deadly sins of nutrition. Watch the video. It makes a lot more sense. Then on my website, bottom right hand corner. Put in your email address, and I'm going to send you a link to a lecture I did called So What Can I Eat? And there we talk about what you can eat. But the big thing, Tim, it, 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 if you've gotten the gut, the gut is from just too much sugar. Now, alcohol, of course, can do it. Absolutely, because alcohol is a sugar. But we, when I went to school, we were taught that if you have fatty liver, it's always alcoholism. Now we're finding things like high fructose corn syrup, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. This can lead to fatty liver which can prevent you from metabolizing fat properly, which then gives you that gut. So the first step I would tell you, Tim, is you got to cut out all the, the, the processed carbohydrates, the breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas. If you do that, how old are you? 23. Oh, tw at 23. You still got a great metabolism. If you do just cut out the breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas, you used to see some dramatic results in a few weeks. And then if we have Thank to go, you, okay, let's try that. And if it doesn't work, give me a call back in two or three weeks and let me know, okay? Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, Timothy. Appreciate it. Let's go back to the callers. If you have a question, give us a call. 844-44-DR-JOE. That's D-R-J-O-E. Mike, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe. How are you today? I'm very happy you called. Great. I am one of your patients and absolutely love the program that you uh, you have. I take the Super Greens and Essential Source every day. Thank you. And I had a, a very quick question. Um, I use Stevia on a regular basis. Yes. Um, now, I was just curious... Would honey or maple syrup be okay for diabetics, or should they just completely stay away from them? Yeah, you got to stay away from it because what happens is honey, um, honey and maple syrup are high in fructose, but they're also high in glucose. So it will That's spike right your on. blood sugar, and then the fructose has to go into the liver and get converted into glucose, and that can cause a whole bunch of problems too. Um, so it's not a good choice. So stevia is a good choice. You can do something called Lohan, L-O-H-A-N. 
uh, erythritol, uh, xylitol, those would be okay too. But stevia really is the best tasting uh, and the least processed. So that's why I'd recommend you kind of stick with the stevia. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. See you at the office real soon. Thanks. Sounds great. See, folks, it really is great. When people start taking the Super Greens, the essential source, they just get blown away by it. I mean, it really is amazing. I, I can't imagine a day going by without it. So, folks, if you want to get that, drjoesposito.com or on Amazon has a lot of my products as well. Uh, if you have a healthcare question, give us a call. Lines are lighting up, 844-44-DR-JOE. 844-44-DR-JOE, that number rings through to my office when I'm not here on the air. If you have questions, send them to, to me through the website, drjoesposito.com. And like me on Facebook or send me your email address so you can get on our email list so you can come out and get invited to the live events that we do. Those are a lot of fun, too. Hey, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling your friends about the show. Obviously, because of you, the show is growing like crazy all around the world. And, and I really do appreciate you uh, telling your friends about it because obviously you're telling your friends and they're tuning in and liking me on Facebook. I see my website hits are just going through the ceiling because uh, we archive our radio shows. You know, it's called a, a blog. Um, or I, I call them archives because I'm old, but we just archive the shows there. And, and in fact, I got two messages already on Facebook while I was on the air saying, are you going to put this show uh, on your archives? And the answer is yes. We put all our shows on your archives. Uh, and it's, it's a hot topic. We're talking about diabetes today and some surprising triggers that can trigger diabetes. And if you're not sleeping properly, people who regularly get less than five and a half hours of sleep a night gain an average of 10 pounds and suffer worsening glucose levels in a relatively short period of time. So a couple of things. We've got to get your digestive system working. And I have a caller. Uh, where was he? Aaron, I'm going to get to you in a second there. We're going to talk about your digestive system um, because you have to get the stomach-breaking proteins into amino acids to produce serotonin, to produce melatonin. So instead of just saying, hey, I can't sleep or I have neck pain or I have back pain or I uh, have numbness, let's try to find out why. And it's kind of funny because if your car is making noise right now, you go out to your car, start it up, it's clank, 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 clank. What do you do? You take it to the mechanic and you say to the mechanic, what can I do to fix the noise? And if the mechanic said, I just want you to loud in your radio so you don't hear the noise, you would laugh and go to another mechanic. And yet for some reason, when it comes to health care, that's an acceptable treatment. I'm going to try to cover up the problem and not really treat it. And I'm okay covering up the problem. If I have neck pain, back pain, I don't mind taking a, a, a pain pill. But then I want to find out why do I have it and then get it fixed. That's what I want you to consider is getting to the cause, not just treating uh, the symptoms. So if you can't sleep, could it be a digestive issue? Could it be that you're eating too late? Remember, when you eat something, it takes about eight hours to get through your digestive system. So if you're eating every eight hours, you're never giving your body a break because you're eating three times a day. Eight, eight times three is 24. See, I went to school in New Jersey. I can do math. And you're never giving your digestive system a break or your body a chance to shut down. And that's why I don't recommend you ever eat past 5 o'clock at night. And even better is if you can skip dinner a few nights a week. Because when you skip dinner, your body gets a real long uh, stretch that it can relax and heal. And also, it's a great way to lose weight, by the way. It's called intermittent fasting. Uh, and I cover that in my new book. It's called uh, Prescription for Extreme Health. In my new book, uh, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, my first book, uh, Eating Right for the Health of It. Uh, a lot of good information on my website, all there, drjoesposito.com. A lot of my products also on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, it might make it a little easier. Uh, good calls coming in. Let's go to DJ. DJ, how can we make your day better? Well, I don't have di a diabetes question. I just have horrible back pain. I have scoliosis. And I was just wondering what to do. Well, I appreciate the call. I, I like the fact that when people, my callers shake it up a little bit. Uh, with scoliosis, what happens is the spine bends sideways. And in all the scoliosis patients I've treated, and there's been, I, I would venture to say, thousands and thousands of them, um, there's always something that's misdiagnosed or undiagnosed, and it's a spasm of the psoas muscle, P-S-O-A-S. -S. The psoas muscle runs from your spine to your thigh, and it's the reason you can bend your leg. It's your major hip flexor. And I find in every scoliosis patient, the psoas is in spasm. And it's a very gentle adjustment. You kind of go push on the belly a little bit and get that muscle to relax. And when we straighten out the spine chiropractically and get the psoas to relax, almost, not always, but almost, we start to see a change in the curvature and it starts to get better and better and better, regardless of the age, by the way, too. The younger, the easier, but even in older folks, it works. Really? Yeah, you want to fix it because scoliosis is not going to get better on its own. It's only going to get worse. Right. Yeah. 
And one of the treatments okay. is surgery, but the surgery still doesn't address the cause, which I find is always somehow related to the psoas muscle. Right. So get the psoas okay. fixed, DJ. That's what I'd suggest. Okay. Thanks Thank a lot. So Appreciate much. it. All right. Let's go to Aaron. Aaron, you there? Hey, Dr. Joe. Hey there. Tell me your situation. I'll tell you what to do about it. Well, I've had uh, acid reflux really for about the last, I'd say, six months. And I don't know if this is related, but I've had a tight feeling in the middle of my throat. Yep. So, And I just can't seem to get it away. I've cut out uh, carbonation. Mm -hmm. I've tried to eat a little bit earlier, Sure. not lay down yeah. after eating, the and the tight feeling in the throat just doesn't yeah. seem to go away. The problem, Aaron, is your stomach is pushing up into your diaphragm. And in, if we did a, a scope on you, an endoscope, we might see something called a hiatal hernia. But what we need to do is physically take the stomach and massage it and pull it down away from the diaphragm. I would say 85% of the patients that I see when I test them for it have this. I have this. And mm. if you go to my website, it's the number one article downloaded on my website. It's on gastroesophageal reflux disease. It's a real short article. I write real short articles. I, I know people keep, don't have long attention spans. But it has a little picture, and we show how we massage the stomach down away from the diaphragm. I have a whole chapter in my book on it, actually, um, because okay. it's so, so I say popular. It's so common. Um, but until you fix it physically, because I have this too, there's nothing you can do chemically aside from not eating. Okay. Because anytime you eat anything, it's going to get caught there. So when you pull the stomach away from the diaphragm, check the spine, check the nerve supply to the stomach as well, um, almost inevitably we get amazing results with that. Okay, great. Thank All right, Aaron. You. Thanks so much. Yeah, folks, the website's a, just a plethora of information there. And when I write articles, I put them up there too. And like I said, I try to write short articles because I know people have a short attention span. I don't want to get too technical. It gets a little boring if, if you start to drift off. All right, we're talking today about some surprising diabetes triggers. And, of course, any question you have on health care, you can give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, my website, if you want to order Dr. Joe Super Greens, Essential Source, my books, if you have questions, my other supplements, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. And we have a lot of those on Amazon as well, if you have an Amazon account. Hey, tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It's about the show. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. I do appreciate that. I am Dr. Joe Esposito, and we're talking today about some uh, surprising insulin triggers. Uh, I got a message on Facebook from Anne, and Anne wants to know what causes the cell to say no to insulin. Uh, what happens is the cell can only take so much sugar in it at, at any one time, then utilize it for fuel. And it can't put any more sugar in because it'll gunk up the works and could actually kill the cell. So the cells, the insulin is, is telling the cell to open up and let sugar in. And the cells are saying, no, no, you can't. I, I have to override you because if we let any more sugar in, we can get sick or die. And so that's where the problem comes in. And then the cells, unfortunately, have to be coaxed into turning back on again. It's kind of like they say, I'm not going to let any more sugar in. And then the cells do need sugar, but they're still being stubborn. And that can happen in the brain as well. And if it happens in the brain, it's called type 3 diabetes, and it can lead to things like Alzheimer's. And so we find when we get people on a more plant-based, high-fiber, low-processed sugar diet, the brain starts to function more efficiently. The cells become less insulin-resistant, and when they're less insulin-resistant, they start to utilize the fuel more efficiently. So you got to get the body off burning glucose as its primary fuel and burning something called ketones, which comes from fat. So that's why eating good fats is a good idea. Avocados, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, extra virgin coconut oil, those are all some good things. So let's see, where were we? We got a lot of callers here. Uh, John, how can we make your day better? Hey, Joe, thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, quick question. Uh, the symptoms that I've had would be, I can tell my blood sugar is dropping to the point where I had to go get a tester and test it to make sure I wasn't crazy. That combined with elevated blood blood pressure, and I can track it to two times when this sort of hit me to an episode three months apart based on what I ate. And I traced what I ate back to having heavy uh, sodium nitrate, sodium oh, bisulfate, yeah. sodium mm -hmm. polyphosphate, any you know, sodium based preservatives where I ate something that was really pumped with it as long as, you know, as well as like at least 2,500 milligrams of salt to boot. You know, my mistake didn't really notice. Now, uh, is what are the, are those triggers for, or can there be like high sensitivity to sodium preservatives? Oh, absolutely. I read on, you know, it's kind of rare, but you know, what, what information do you have and where can I research more to kind of find out if I really do have a hypersensitivity to that stuff? Well, here's a simple thing you can do for all allergies. And this is a little trick that it's, it's kind of a freebie that you can do. Um, take your resting blood pressure, your pulse rate. I'm sorry. So sit for about 10 minutes, take your pulse rate. 
then eat anything. This could be you want to test to see if you're allergic to wheat or dairy or uh, alcohol. Take it, wait about five minutes, and take your pulse again. If it goes up six beats per minute or more, you're probably having an allergic reaction or some type of reaction to whatever you just put in your body. So that saves you a ton of money on testing, and it's a kind of a little at-home test you can do. Chances are you're going to have that reaction. But if you're not feeling good after eating something, John, you just shouldn't eat it. It's just that simple. Um, and I would strongly advise you stay away from those preservatives because they can do some real serious damage. Yeah, I just want to know if there's like any medical information on, you know, people having sensitivity to that. Um, if you just or, Google, you know, chemical. the FDA says it's safe, but, you know, there are cases where, especially with asthmatics, I read that they could be problematic. Well, they say cigarettes. I mean, cigarettes are on the market. Alcohol is on the market. You know, how can these things be on the market if, if, if they're safe? Well, they're, they're considered grass, generally regarded as safe. GRAS is how the government rate, rates things. And if it's GRAS rating, it means that, well, you're probably not going to die from taking it right away. But I would really strongly advise you not to, to put that into your body because it's, it's not a good thing. But if you just Google, and I'm, I'm sure I have tons of research in my office, but I just Google food sensitivities to preservatives, you're going to get millions and millions of hits. And I'm sure you can find something that way too. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Well, I'll search it in that direction. Yeah, that's a good way to go. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Lots of callers. Let's keep going. Uh, Dee, how can we make your day better? Hi, yes. I was wondering what uh, can be done for someone that has diabetes, but they um, have numb feet all the time. I see it all the time in our offices. Uh, step number one, you got to cut out all your processed carbohydrates, everything the diabetes doctor has told you, and more fiber. Fiber is going to slowly push the food through the colon and give you a slow release of sugar. And so eating a more plant-based diet, because the only place you can get fiber is from plants, you're going to see a dramatic change most likely uh, in your blood sugar. As far as the numbness in the feet, you have to check the nerves in the low back because every case I have with numbness in the feet, there's a pinch nerve. And if you pinch a nerve, you also pinch a blood vessel in the low back. That's the nerve that goes into your feet. So by manipulating or adjusting the spine and getting your diet straightened out, most people get very good results with that. Okay. Okay. We have an office right All near right. you, so you can come see us. All right. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, let's just keep going with the callers here. Mark, how can we make your day better? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to say you have an awesome show. First well, time you. listener and uh, extremely impressed. Oh, well, thank you, Mark. Glad you could uh, join us. <laughs> um, my question goes around. In the last 10 years, I've gained between 50 and 80 pounds. Uh, I've gotten overweight. Um, and it, the doctors say that's what's caused my sleep apnea. Sure. Uh, I do the CPAP, and I still don't feel like I get a full night's sleep. I, I don't. I haven't. I can't remember the last time I, I slept a really solid good wow. sleep. Wow. Okay. And um, the next day, you know, I don't have the energy to to work and then go work out or go exercise. It's, you know, I'm exhausted when I get home, and I don't. I don't know if there's something a supplement I should take or sure. anything of that nature. Well, a couple of things to start with. I would recommend Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source because, again, that can help your cravings so you start eating better. You make better decisions, and that's on the website or on Amazon. Um, okay. The sleep apnea, the stomach is put is, – you, you, when you breathe, your diaphragm drops down, you suck air into your lungs, and then your diaphragm lifts up, and it pushes the air out. That's how you breathe. Well, what happens is – and I used to be overweight, so I can, I can say fat on radio because I used to be very fat when I was a kid – when you lay down, your stomach pushes on your diaphragm. You don't have gravity assisting the diaphragm. You can't breathe. You can't breathe, sleep apnea. So we can give you CPAP to try to force air into your body, or we can try to take the pressure off your diaphragm, which, of course, is getting to the cause, not treating the symptoms. So if you go to my right. website, read the article on GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, I talk about how the diaphragm and the stomach all work together. Um, but yes, losing weight should help tremendously because it's going to take the mechanical pressure off the diaphragm. Okay. Okay. Try uh, that, Mark. Truly you... appreciate it and very impressed again. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Glad you could join us. See, folks, we get new listeners from all over the world every single day. Let's see. We got a few minutes here. Jason, how can we make your day better? Oh, hi, uh, Dr. Joe. Yeah, this is Jason. I, I appreciate your time. Um, I, I was diagnosed with CMT, Charcot Marie Tooth. It's a demyelinize, oh, yeah. demyelinization. And uh, I was wondering if there's, I don't know, is there anything that I haven't uh, found yet that, yes. that you might know of? That yes, a couple of things. Number one, 
Check the nerves in the low back because that's the nerve that goes into the legs. You know what, Jason? i got to go to break, but this is a really good question because this is something that's going to affect all of us. Can you hold on one second? Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold yeah, on, thank folks. You. Thanks. All right, folks, if you have a question, 844 44 Joe gets you through to the studio. That number gets you through to my office. Office is uh, when I'm not on the air. My website, 24 hours a day, drjoesposito.com. Articles, archive radio shows. If you like what you're hearing today, you want to hear, have a friend listen to it, go to the website, send them the link. More than happy to let you do that. I videotape my live lectures. Live lectures just rock, and so you might want to watch some of those as well. And uh, like me on Facebook or uh, t- sign up for my newsletters, and I'll send you emails about when I'm doing live lectures because they're a lot of fun. I promise you, if you come out, they're a lot of fun. Hey, folks, got to go to a break. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. I'm going to be right back. Hey, friends. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. Do appreciate you taking time out of your day. And uh, we're talking today about some surprising things that can trigger diabetes and throw your sugar balance off, your insulin levels off. And before we go back to that, I have Jason on the line. You still there, Jason? Yeah. Hi, Jason. I mean, uh, Joe. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Yo, you're Jason. I'm Joe. Yes. Um, and your question was, you have Marie Charcot tooth uh, con- disease, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. And so what that is, why don't you explain to the listeners what that is, and, and then we'll tell you what, what we can do about it. Oh, it's the demyelinization of the uh, uh, of the nerves, like the insulation around the nerves is uh, right. deteriorated, and uh, I had no um, ability to dorsiflex right. and uh, no ability to like no calf muscles, no ankle muscles, anything yeah, exactly. like that. Yeah, They call it the inverted wine bottle, right? You're thinner on the bottom, wider on top. Yeah. So, so a couple of things. Now, it it is a condition uh, that you have, but let's. What can we do about it? Number one, you always yeah. want to check the nerves in the low back because if you have a pinched nerve in the low back, that's the nerve that goes down into the leg. And because of, oh. the, yeah, because of the condition, you're going to be walking a little out of kilter, and that's going to put stress yeah. on that nerve, pinching it, making the problem worse. So you kind of get stuck in this cycle. Now, Jason, that okay. same nerve controls your colon, <laughs> sex organs, and bladder. So now you might have things like gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary problems, romantic problems, because that's the nerve that goes from everything to the waist down. Second thing is you, oh, wow. yeah, you really got to keep your acid levels low for the rest of your life, as we all should. It's not just you. And there are seven foods that what I would consider the big seven, what I call the seven deadly sins. So those would be alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. So you okay. just you have it. You've got to be careful with it. It just kind of is what it is. Okay. Um, okay. And so going to a more plant based diet, a more alkalizing diet, plants uh, are going to be more alkalizing than, than animal products. It's going to help the nerves work more efficiently because acid can dissolve or eat away at the myelin sheath. So you've got to be careful. With oh. that. Now you're not on a, a cholesterol medication, are you? No. Uh-uh. Okay. Good. Because cholesterol medica- you need cholesterol to build the myelin sheet. The myelin sheet is the covering around the nerve. And if you're on cholesterol okay. medication, sometimes people go too low with their cholesterol. But if you don't have that problem, so I'm okay with that. Uh, but those, th- those things, get, get off the bad stuff, get on the good stuff. Things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, very alkalizing to the system. And, oh. and then get the nerves in the low back treated. And then you should do pretty well for the rest of your life. Oh, will it reverse the damage then? or It may somewhat. You may never you know, be running in the Olympics, but uh, chances are we should see some really good positive results in a relatively short period of time. Oh, wow. And I can make an appointment with you then? And sure. You can, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, we'll take a look at it and see what we need to do and get this thing as, as best as you can be. That's my goal is get you working the best you possibly can. Wow. Okay. That's exciting. Okay. Thank right, you. Jason, I appreciate your time. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks a lot. Yep, 844 Joe. if you want to get through the studio. And that number, by the way, rings through to my offices. So if you want to make an appointment, you have questions, you could always do that. Um, you can send me questions through my website as well, drjoesposito.com. And thank you for the, a ton of people that have liked my Facebook page uh, since I've been on the air because that's going to give you information about when I do live lectures and when we have special events coming up. Uh, which is kind of uh, exciting for you because uh, this is all good information we give you. I go back to my notes, but I got a lot of callers, so let's do that. Iris, how can we make your day better? Hi, Dr. Joe. Um, last week I was diagnosed with gout, yes. and I was given a prescription to treat it, um, but I don't want to take any more medication. I was wondering what can I do to naturally treat this? Okay, yeah, gout is is a symptom. It's telling you something's wrong again. So many times they say you want to avoid meat. But the key, the thing that everybody's missing with gout is you got to cut out your high fructose corn syrup and all your fructose. Because fructose, when it gets into your liver, has to be converted into glucose. So follow me on this for a second. 
converting okay. it into glucose, the glucose is then used as fuel by the cells, and that kind of ties in with our diabetes talk today. The problem is that if you take more than 20 grams of fructose a day, you start producing something called uric acid. And uric acid is what gets in your joints and causes gout. Now, I'm a chiropractor. My job is get you out of pain. So when patients come in our offices, we realign the spine, the extremities. So I have a couple of patients I'm working now with the skull, getting the skull bones back in place. Had a patient hit his head in a worker's comp injury, lost his sense of smell and taste right after he hit his head, and his skull bones were out of place. So hopefully we can put those back in place. But I digress. So I want to get you out of pain, and we can give you the best adjustments in the world, but if you keep building up uric acid and getting in your joints, it's going to hurt, and you're going to blame it mm-hmm. on me. So you got to cut out all, <laughs> all your sugar, Iris, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, because the uric acid is being produced in the liver by, in the metabolism of, 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 of high fructose corn syrup or, or fructose. The other okay. downside is that if you're doing fructose, uh, creating uric acid, the uric acid prevents your body from producing something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. And so now you start seeing circulatory issues, whether it's cold hands, cold feet, memory problems, romantic problems, because you need circulation in those parts too. So you just got to cut out all your sugar, and I'd cut out all my meat as well, and that would stop the production of, of uric acid uh, to, to a great extent. Okay. Okay? Let's try that and see if it works. I mean, I should take to go with that? or I would take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source because that can alkalize a lot of the acid in your body, neutralize the acid, and so then it doesn't get into the joints. So that's why you got to go to a more plant-based diet, but Super Greens and Essential Source is plant-based diet on steroids. It's just super concentration of nutrients. That's why I recommend it for just about everybody. Okay? Okay. You can get that on my website, too. Thanks. Yeah, folks, and we have the Super Greens, the Essential Source, my books, other supplements are on my website, drjoesposito.com, also on Amazon. So some folks have an Amazon account, and they'd rather use their Amazon account. Uh, you can do that, too, and we get it shipped out, usually within a day or two. It's pretty cool, unless we have some shipping issues, which we usually don't. Um, oh, got to go to a break. Uh, the number 844 Joe gets you through to the studio here. However, that number, well, not however, that number rings through to my office when I'm not on the air. So if you want to make appointments or if you want more information, you can do that. Like I said, like me on Facebook, uh, follow follow me on Facebook. Um, Send me messages through my, uh, if you have questions through my website, drjoesposito.com. Great place to order supplements, listen to archive radio shows, videos, uh, a lot of good information there. Hey, listen, I got to go to a break. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling your friends about the show. I do appreciate that because so many of you are uh, tuning in to the show. We can see that on Facebook. We can see it on our, our website. So we do thank you for that. I really do appreciate you spreading the words. Uh, we're talking today about diabetes triggers, and so we've got a lot more questions to take, too. So uh, if, we, we, if you missed something earlier, you can go to my website. We archive the whole show on drjoesposito.com, and you can tune into that. Scott, tell me what's going on hey. with your girlfriend. Hey, Dr. Joe. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, started about thir- uh, Friday, she had a swelling in her jaw, and it extends down to her uh, neck. Uh-huh. She's stubborn. She won't go to the emergency room. She has no family doctor. She has no insurance. Sure. She won't just, she just let her suffer. I'm just curious possibilities of what it could be. That one, I'd want you to definitely get that checked out by a medical professional because if it's yeah. a, if it's an infected tooth, that infection can get into the into the skull. If it goes up, if depending where it is, if it goes up or down, um, it could be a lymph node that's swollen. It could just be a simple infection. Uh, but that sounds like something we definitely want to get a medical evaluation on as soon as possible. And you know uh, me, I, I'm I'm Mr. Holistic, but we definitely need medicine uh, in certain I cases. Just, and this sounds I like one. I want to look at for a bio part. You know, I answer because you know I need you know doing what you do. Yeah. I do appreciate it. Yep, that's what I would do is get her to a medical uh, uh, fill, uh, medical person as soon as possible. I'm just going to have to drag her, kick and scream. You're going to have to, Scott. <laughs> this this is an emergency. Yeah, we, she can't be stubborn on this one, okay? Uh, Let me know yeah. how it turns out. Thank Thanks you. so much. Okay. See, see, folks, that's the whole thing is no one doctor can fix everything. I would love to think that me and my team of doctors are wonderful and we can fix everything, but we can't. If she's got an infection, that might need medical attention right away. Now, that doesn't mean she shouldn't then change her diet. She shouldn't get chiropractic care to open up the nerve supply going to her head. Um, she shouldn't get on a good supplement regimen, things like Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source. But this is why we work so closely with so many other healthcare professionals. We get referrals all the time and we refer out all the time because I like to know that the patient's getting the best treatment 
that they can possibly get, whether it's at my offices or if that's at a neurosurgeon's office or a psychiatrist's office or or the emergency room. And it's really neat to see how many doctors we all work with that all work together and say, hey, Joe, we don't know what to do about this one. Why don't you take a look at it first? I love when surgeons do that. They'll send a case over an orthopedic or a neurosurgeon and say, you work on them for a little bit and let's see if we can get some results. If not, we could always cut them open. But I'd rather try the, the, uh, the more conservative approach first. And that makes me very happy because the patient now is the one who's benefiting. So it's kind of a neat thing that happens. It's, it's kind of a new phenomenon, actually, that doctors are working together. But we see it every day in our offices. Lynn, tell me about your son. Hi, he's 17 years old. Um, he's has a history of digestive problems since he was an infant. Uh-huh. But um, recently, the past couple of years, he gets choked when yeah. he eats. And sure. there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason of what causes it. Uh-huh. A specialist um, diagnosed him with EE. Yes, es- es- esophageal they- eosinovitis. Is that what eosinovitis? Yeah. Okay, yes. Okay, <laughs> And I just yeah. want to know, you know, what we can do to fight this and to keep him off as much medication as possible. Sure. Well, the eosinophils occur when there's an infection. The, the, the eosinophils are sent. There's something irritating his throat, most likely the stomach acid. And so we have to start to consider, does he have a hiatal hernia? Chances are he does. And we need to, I would take the stomach and gently massage it and pull it down away from the diaphragm. And when we do that, then the, what's called the lower esophageal sphincter, the little sphincter that holds the food down, closes, and the food stays into the stomach. So the problem is physical, not necessarily chemical, if, if, I, if I'm guessing right here. Huh. Uh, and the reason is I see this stuff all day, every day. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident with it. And when we see esophagitis and things like that, we need to pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, get them on a good basic diet, probably get them on some supplements short term to fix the damage that occurred. Uh, and then he probably is going to be fine. If he doesn't do that, the esophagitis is just going to continue and get worse. And my concern is it can lead to esophageal cancer. I'm not trying to scare you, Lynn. I'm trying to tell you what could happen if you don't fix it. Okay. Okay, because that acid is not designed to be up in the esophagus. And many times people get runny nose from that, coughing, like you said, feeling choked up. That's all the acid coming up into the uh, into the esophagus. So. Um, I would try, you know, have them come see us. We'll see if we can get it straightened out. If we can't, then we could always go to a more aggressive approach. But I would start conservative first on him. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. And folks, I don't mean to scare you when I say these things, but I have to let you know this is not something that you want to, you know, take lightly because the biggest complaint I get in my office by far every day, every minute, not every minute, every 10 minutes, why didn't I do this sooner? I didn't know that there was an alternative or that I could do anything. The answer is, yeah, you should. And that's why when you come to our offices, if we think we can help you, we'll tell you. If we can't, we're going to tell you that, too. David, how can we make your day better? Well, make my feet feel better anyway. Okay. You have diabetes? No, I don't. I'm borderline type 2 diabetic. Sure. Okay. And I'm on three medicines. And, again, one of them, they're telling me it has me expel the sugar through my urine right and i'm i'm you know, i'm in my late 60s and my problem is my feet i seem to get beginning a lot more numbness in sure. my feet and i'm just getting a little concerned because i have right. friends who've had problems with their legs their feet oh sure and trying to get more on a natural okay yeah course of medicine yeah. these three ones that i'm taking has controlled my blood sugar but I think I'm having other effects, and yeah, that's why are, yeah. you know, I wanted okay. to talk to you. Okay. Now, I'm not a medical doctor, so I can't tell you to take drugs or not take drugs. But I would tell of you course. this. You've got to increase your fiber because studies have shown if you – don't quote me on the numbers. It was several years I read the study. It was 68 to 72 grams of fiber a day. Now, that's a lot of fiber. The fiber is going to slowly push the food through your colon, give you a slow release of sugar, taking the stress off the pancreas. It stops producing so much insulin. The cells then say, hey, I want some more sugar. They open up. They allow sugar. They allow insulin to let sugar back in, and it normalizes it. But 68 to 72 grams. So you should be having bowel movements two to three times a day if you're eating the right amount of fiber. So I would yeah, go. Okay. Yeah, normally, normally I have one maybe every couple of days. See, well, there you go. See, I, it's almost like I read your, read your diary, didn't I, David? Uh, so. <laughs> what? What, I have a what, supplement on my diet. Uh, on my, I have a supplement on my website called Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser, and that's designed to kind of jumpstart your colon. Then get on a good plant-based diet. 
Super Greens, an essential source, are excellent. And you could even take a supplement called Jim Nemo. We have that at our office as well. And that would probably help tremendously. Okay. So fiber, you're talking maybe like... Um, yeah, got, got to run, broccoli. David. Yeah, yeah. Any, any type of plant would be good. Got to run, okay? If you have any more questions, send it through my website, drjoesposito.com. That goes for any of you. Now, folks, if you want to get supplements, you want to send me questions, drjoesposito.com. Supplements are also available on Amazon. We make that easy for you. My books are there, too. Hey, listen, thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show. We'll talk to you next time. Tell your